I've never been the type of person who was content with taking orders. It's hard not to be a little jealous of James Smith. At the age of 28, this young man who grew up in the Houston ghetto is now a self-made millionaire. To make a long story short, I was totally unaware of, of them charging me with that pill. Where do you think the pill came from? I think the pill came from Raymond's pocket. And so you think they planted this pill on you? Oh, definitely. You have to uh, survive the guys that's in the hood because they trying to get you. You know, wherever success is concerned, they trying to get you. And the police that's supposed to be protecting me, the ones I'm paying all these taxes to, had became an uh, 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 enemy. Why is everyone so scared of Jay Prince? <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a beast, you know what I mean? In them streets, you know, I heard about, you know what I mean? The, the shit that had happened to people back in the day, you know what I mean? So when you hear those stories and you see how you move, you know, that be, that be scared of you, you know what I mean? Period. You would almost rather die before you allow somebody to really, truly disrespect the, the brand. Oh yeah, we gonna live and die about this. Period. Live and die about it. That is, that is us. My name, the Prince name, rap a lot, all that shit coincide together. Mm. Hey yo squad, what's the drill? Back with another video, man. You know history holds some of the greatest secrets, but there's one in hip hop that many are clueless about. Like why is this ominous figure named Jay Prince so feared in the rap game? How did his family amass so much wealth? And how did his son Jay Prince Jr. turn his legacy into the mob ties movement that not only stands on business for some of the biggest A-list stars like Drake, but is allegedly connected to the most recent demise of Takeoff? If you want these questions answered and know the dark history of mob ties and hip hop, then you're in the right place. So without further ado, let's skip the play play and get down to business. To understand the Mob Ties story, you first need to know the foundation, and it all starts with the notoriously known Jay Prince, who came up in the streets of Fifth Ward, Houston, Texas. Surrounded by poverty and the outbreak of coke having the trenches in a chokehold back in the day, Jay Prince adapted to his surroundings to make it out the hood. He wanted moms of them to have the finer things in life, so he had to do what he had to do. According to those that knew him and grew up under his wing, Jay Prince wasn't one to fold under pressure and instead became a wolf and a beast that became feared throughout the streets due to his mob type way of doing things and connections throughout the different hoods. They, they, like, they have labeled you a very dangerous man. Well, I wonder why would they do that? <laughs> Dudes tell stories of how his word held weight in the streets, from commanding Master P to not touch his artist, to squeezing Birdman when he tried to play them for money. Jay Prince is like the hip hop boogeyman. Well, you were you know? beefing with Master P during this time, right? Right, right, right. Right, definitely, man. That's another thing, man. He, he called P and told P to, you know, pump his brakes, keep it on wax, you know what I mean? Like, I done seen been in the airport with them. Mystical, all his bodyguards, everybody, I, they could just meme mug me. We all sitting down there two, three rolls from each other. All they could do is meme mug me. Can't do shit because of the old man, so. Jay is connected. <laughs> but that money, power, and respect came at a price. At just 28 years old, Jay Prince went from being broke to being rich, stacking up M's in the bank. He was whipping Rolls Royces before dudes could even dream about owning one. Even more, he was giving them to the homies. It was straight boss moves. Back then, raw flush. Dealing with raw flush back then. Raw. Yeah. yeah. So back then, I made a decision. So God damn. I say, I'm trying to be somebody else. But with all that wealth and his name growing as the kingpin running the streets, you know the feds wasn't gonna sit and let that slide. While they was lurking, Jay Prince was building an empire. With the money rolling in, he diversified his catalog branching into boxing where he managed Floyd Mayweather early on in his career. I'm good. You was instrumental in Floyd Mayweather's career early on too, right? Oh, most definitely. Most definitely. I managed Floyd Mayweather for, for four years. Mm. And we all know about his infamous record label, rap -A -Lot Records, which was inspired by his brother, Sir rap -A -Lot, who was later arrested. rap -A -Lot Records was the next venture to take his power to an even higher level early on. People don't know how connected he was. Even the big bad bully, Suge Knight, was his acquaintance. He was hanging with the gangsters and music moguls controlling the industry in the streets. Jay Prince even had to warn Biggie and Puff about Biggie's life being in danger, but they didn't listen. Was your reasoning because you've seen it play out like this before? Because everybody says you warned Diddy and 
big about about being in LA at the time. Yeah, yeah, no doubt about it. You know, I uh, actually turned my whole bus around. I was, you know, a long ways out and just to go back to Puffy and Biggie and let them know what I had felt and the things that I heard in the streets. Jay Prince was up and was building one hell of a legacy, not breaking his word to build something of himself in the music biz, and that's exactly what he did. But the feds finally started making their move. According to him, they had a hitman on him and was sending shots and hitting licks on his homies at first. This was a hitman. I don't, I don't know no better way to uh, characterize this guy other than hitman, but they chose him and the agent Chad Scott, who is uh, presently I think he'd been indicted on 13 cases. They put both of these guys on me to wipe me out. They destroyed me to destroy a rapper. When they realized he wasn't budging, they decided to try to set him up and do him dirty. Lurking in the cut, they pulled up on him one night and tried to get him to go into a dark spot at a McDonald's parking lot. And a DPS agent pulled behind me. And it was the first time that I ever been stopped one time and told to go to another destination stop again mm. but this other spot they wanted me to go to was dog you know what i mean it's like uh in a mcdonald's parking lot but deep in the mcdonald's parking lot and it was dark and i saw two cars prince was street smart though and he realized that that dark spot would be the end of him so he moved to another place with light where the cops went on to try to little boy him grilling him about his money and firearms when he got out the car, another agent came out of the cut from the dark spot. And after searching his vehicle and checking out the poles he legally owned, they gave him a warning ticket and let him go. When Prince got back in his car, he checked his strap and realized that one or two of the bullets was missing. They was trying to scheme to take him out. He really dodged a bullet, for real. He came back to me and said, OK, you free to go and gave me a warning ticket. You know, a warning ticket. And it was then when I got home, I realized a bullet or two was missing. So red flags like Oh shit. Yeah, like went up. I'm like, damn, why would they keep one of my bullets? Why were they trying to pull me in the dark? They was persistent and try to set him up in political scandals next. To this, cause even Al Gore, you know, came in a portrait where they tried to set me up at my church with Al Gore. Al Gore came to visit my church. You know, which when you're running for president, you visit a lot of black churches and stuff like that. And my pastor wanted me to meet Al Gore that day. So when I pull up, you know, I was married at the time. You know, I told my wife, I say, all these people ain't here with the president because I was watching body language. You know, I saw black glasses kind of look in my direction. I digged into his story he told in an interview, and for real, for real, it was all true what he was saying. Every tactic was failing to take down rap a lot, so what they do to try to take out the big man, they pulled the old plant something in his car trick. Even before then, they stopped me one night and they, they planted a, a pill on me called ecstasy. Prince was no pushover and didn't cop out to it being his, but instead pushed back and beat the case when the jig was up on what they did. Rap a lot became even more notorious. They were fighting the system and exposing crooked cops, and it was happening live for the world to see. Harassing me uh, and saying things for a long time, but for them to go to the extent where they have to do dirty, you know, things like this and plant dope on me, uh, that, that, that upsets me a lot. They controlled substance were found. Jay Prince would later hire his own investigator to gather evidence on the crooked agent, Chad A. Scott, who tried to take him out and uncovered that bro was abusing his power and murking people just like he was trying to do him. On August 12, 2021, the law finally caught up to the agent and he was sentenced to 13 years for the same allegations Jay Prince was trying to tell him about. After going through all he had went through to amass his wealth and surviving the systems hit on his life, Jay Prince called the quits with the streets and focused solely on ruling with rap a lot to avoid his destructive lifestyle. The closet uh, was a situation where I made one of the most important decisions of my life. You know, it was where I transitioned from the street 
the corporate America. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I, I gave up the game. His kids gave him the push to make that decision, and he built rap a lot to pass down the family ways to them, and that's exactly what happened. Part of my main decision for making that was for my kids. You know, it was a time in my life I didn't care. You know what I mean? I just, I didn't care. I was in the street to die. You know what I mean? It didn't matter to me. But it's a beautiful thing, you know, to look at your kids and say, okay, I'm going to do this for y'all. You know what I mean? I didn't have enough sense to do it. I said, but I'm going to do this for y'all. And all of that was a part of the decision making that I made in plus. That gave birth to the beginnings of what the world would know as mob ties. From a young age, J. Prince Jr. was molded under the guidance and ways of his father. His values are his values, regardless of who you are. And he distilled that in us. Definitely. It brought him some hardships living within the lifestyle of the streets, but it made him into the same feared and powerful man he grew up to be. Coming up as a child, I done dealt with so much, man. And it's some things that I can't talk about. Oh, I bet there's a lot you can't talk about. I done dealt with so much that it's instilled in me, man. Because I've been dealing with this since a kid. Man. He always let us know, hey, man, these people don't like me, so they might not like y'all. Mm. So his situations, we had to deal with, too. He respected the legacy his father built and took on the torch to continue their family ruling. And with that, he linked up with some of his homies in the 10th grade to form the movement Young Mafia, a.k.a. Young Mob. J. Prince Jr. rallied different parts of the city into one collective group under that name. When did you start the Mob Ties brand name? I mean, Mob Ties derives from Young Mafia. I started Young Mafia, we used to call it Young Mob. Uh -huh. I started Young Mob, me and a couple of the homies. We started Young Mob probably early high school, like my 10th grade year. We started an entity where I brought all the different sides of town together and made one collective group for us to get money. As he grew, the name became more notorious as a movement known as Mob Ties, which had its reach all over the U.S. The Mob Ties brand has gotten so massive that arguably one of the biggest artists in the game is under their wing, Drizzy Drake. Drake was discovered and signed to the management label of J. Prince Jr.'s brother, Jazz Prince, after finding him on the OG music platform, MySpace, and he got him to deal with Young Money later on. Who'd you find? Drake. That was the first artist you found? That was my, yeah, that, yep. <laughs> that was my first artist that I went out to look for. Drake has become family to the princess and in turn has become backed by one of the most powerful black families of wealth, power, and respect. His album Scorpion, Drake dedicated the banger Mob Ties to his second family and Mob Ties brothers. J. Prince Jr. took Mob Ties to the world. It was his version of rap a lot, holding the weight of his family through loyalty and respect. But just like his pops, the ops and the cops were still scheming to trying to get him caught. Even to this day, plots like fake bags with illegal substances are being distributed with their brand trying to get Prince Jr. and them in the clutches of the law. Seems very similar to the same planting tactics that they tried on OG Prince back in the day. But just like then, it failed now. Talking about people sort of disrespecting the brand name and stuff. Uh, most recent thing that I've seen expressed by the Prince family on social media was basically this outcry against these pills that they've been selling with rap a lot logos on. How does that make you feel? I mean, you know, yeah, I'm right there. Like, it's crazy. First off, I don't know if it's the police or the streets. The media nearly got the mob tie honcho hemmed up too for clout and clickbait when they made his Cribs tour about him holding the power pole. All his straps were legal, but they chose to highlight the firearm pick for views and what you know, it brought negative spotlight on bro and he caught a gun case right after. I was able to find the news coverage on the gun case too and they had bro sounding like a straight up ruffian. Talk about cops could have been shot because he had the nine hidden in his crotch light bars. They made it seem like dude trafficked the strap behind bars on purpose to do something when they just didn't find it on them when they searched them when they pulled them over. This is rap music mogul James Andre Prince, better known to his fans as J. Prince Jr. And tonight, he is facing charges after smuggling a loaded 9mm semi-automatic handgun into the Houston Police Department jail. 
According to prosecutors, Prince had just left a party at a posh hotel about 6.30 last night when he was arrested for DWI. The problem is, after being arrested, Prince was able to hide a loaded 9mm gun in his crotch, despite multiple searches by... As if bro was supposed to say, here, I got the strap on me too, and get into more trouble. J. Prince Jr., though, was trained for this and continued standing strong on mob top business and anyone in his way was getting crossed out. Before 6 9 became known as the mascot for snitching, he tried to disrespect the mob by allegedly not checking in when he came to the city and J. Prince Jr. made a public post letting him know the business ASAP, no Rocky, after they kicked him out the club. Six Nine then put in on his best gangster impression, went ahead and further disrespected the mob, and said he's still not checking in, and even decided to pull up in Houston talking that talk. Yo, I'm starting to think that cloud chasing is cool. Like that's a sport now. Like being gangster is not cool no more. I think cloud chasing is. Mentioning Takashi Six Nine's name, you lit. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna continue not to check in. You know what I'm saying? Something I don't do. I love everybody. J Prince Jr. said I ain't bet and went to where Six Nine was headlining in South by Southwest and gangstered all the security they put in place to protect 6 9 Got on stage and took the mic stating that they were here for 6 9 Dude had everyone outside ready to catch him lacking. Hey, what's 6 9 there? Hey, what's 6 9 there? Hey, 6 9 there? Hey, what's 6 9 there? Y'all came to see 6 9 huh? Where you at? Them boys stood on business and made 6 9 a no-show after he was shook. Let's talk a lot of shit, huh? But won't even show up to their own show. Yeah, damn, you don't want your back in? You don't want your back in? J. Prince Jr. showed his weight in the city and took 6 9 not showing up after all that talk as a sign of respect for the mob ties power. Man, it was just a moment where I had to put a kid in his place. Mm. Like, and as you see, like once I addressed the situation, I said nothing more about it because I'm not no lip boxer. Mm. I'm not going to go on social media and go back and forth with you. None of that. I'm going to check your temperature. And, you know, respect can be shown in a bunch of different fashions. Mm. He showed me respect. Mob Ties has since extended their reaches and built up to become an even larger entity with ties to some of your favorite mainstream artists that always come through the hood and show love. So you never can forget where you come from. And that's something that my old man instilled in me also. They never forget where you come from. Like every year, for my birthday, I have a block party in Fifth Ward, in the middle of Fifth Ward. I don't know if you've seen the footage or not, but it be mm -hmm. thousands of people in the middle of my hood. And Drake, them Ben, Meek, them Ben, Ross, them Ben, Chris Brown, Tiger, like the name, Black Youngster, Moneybag, like the name, Lil' Kim, it go on and on. Right. Everybody come out every year. Fifth Ward saw the rise of Rap A Lot Records, and now they see Young Prince Jr. with an equally respected movement, Mob Ties. When the mob comes through, it's nothing but love and respect because the Prince name has been instilled with that energy with how they move and everything they built. Where the mob goes from here, seems like they're on a mission to take over the world with how they operate. And the sky's the limit. But one thing's for sure, they gotta stay out the way, man. So there you have it. Until next time, stay smart, stay alert, and stay real. I'm out, y'all.